think a lot of the books that we wrote about surprised me, but one of the first ones that comes to mind is Moby Dick, which most people don't think of as having, you know, uh, most people, I think, probably don't realize that there's any romantic subplot, and, and the romantic subplot in Moby Dick is pretty um, slender. They don't spend a lot of time on the romantic subplot, but the romantic subplot in Moby Dick involves um, Captain Ahab's young wife, who he weds, he, he sort of says very evocatively that he leaves a single dent in the pillow, so he sort of stays with her one night, and then he goes out to sea um, and, you know, starts hunting whales again, um, back to his obsession. Uh, and, I, and I felt like the, the lesson in Moby Dick was, you know, men who are obsessed with achieving some kind of goal, like, like Captain Ahab was, you know, we, we tend to tell ourselves, okay, you know, he's really busy right now, he's really obsessed with his career right now, but that'll change if I just hang in there, you know, things will get better, I'll, I'll have more attention from this person that I'm, that I'm in love with. And I think the fact is that, for the most part, save for, you know, some kind of dramatic intervention or some kind of dramatic breakdown, um, you know, people who are obsessed with their careers don't really just suddenly say, okay, I finally, you know, achieved the goal that I've, that I've been after, you know, like killing Moby Dick. Um, and now I'm just going to kind of chill out and relax and suddenly spend a lot of time with my family. Um, so I guess that's a long way of saying that Moby, the, the lesson I saw, the romantic lesson I saw in Moby Dick was, you know, workaholics are not the best people to marry um, or to, to devote yourself to because they are generally more obsessed with their careers and goals than they are with you.